the uses for a toaster oven go way beyond making toast. A good toaster oven can function as a small second oven. It can even take the place of your big oven most days of the week. Now like your big oven, it can roast a chicken or baked potatoes or a batch of cookies. It preheats faster, it uses less energy, and it's really easy to clean. It also won't heat up your kitchen so much on hot days. Now we like to use toaster ovens for tasks like toasting nuts or breadcrumbs. They're ideal for roasting a vegetable side dish or baking an eight inch square cake or broiling a few fillets of fish. They're even handy for holidays or parties when you need just a little more cooking space. To find the best toaster oven for home cooks, we focused on models big enough to function as mini ovens. All of ours are wide enough to toast six slices of bread and they're tall enough to roast a four pound chicken. We chose 10 priced from about $45 to about $270. Now first and foremost, a toaster oven had better make good toast. In each oven, we toasted single slices of bread on light, medium, and dark settings. And then we toasted four and six slices at a time. We wanted ovens that were well calibrated, so the low setting would give us slices with light color, medium would mean evenly golden brown, and on dark would get deep color but not burned. Now that was the ideal. The reality, on dark, some of these toasters ticked on for eight or nine minutes and the toast was scorched. One toasted for more than 12 minutes on dark. So we were not that surprised when that toast looked and smoked like a chunk of charcoal. Now we know factors like time and color can vary based on the size and thickness and moisture content of your bread, but 12 minutes is just too long to wait for a piece of toast, especially a burnt one. But we also looked at how evenly the ovens toasted. After some fiddling with the settings, we could make single slices that were relatively well browned on both sides in most of the toasters. But when we toasted four or six slices, evenness often went out the window. Now some even left whole slices practically blonde, telling us that the heat wasn't dispersing evenly throughout the oven. Only a few ovens evenly browned all the slices from edge to edge on both sides. Now we also preferred toaster ovens with a range of doneness settings. Our top rated machines offered seven different shades and could actually toast to those settings. And that gave us the flexibility we wanted to get exactly what we wanted. Now beyond toast, we put the ovens through a battery of cooking tests. We baked potatoes, we heated frozen pizza, we baked sugar cookies, broiled asparagus, melted cheese onto tuna sandwiches, and roasted whole chickens. Now surprisingly, despite their small size, Many of these toaster ovens actually cooked food much slower than traditional wall ovens. Now to find out why, we wired thermocouples to the ovens and we tracked how well they could hold a 350 degree temperature over a period of two hours. All ovens, including the big one in your kitchen, operate by cycling the heat on and off. So some fluctuation in temperature is normal and expected. Most home ovens fluctuate about plus or minus 25 degrees from the target. Our top toaster ovens, the ones that made fully cooked, evenly browned food within our recipe times, those varied from the target temperature only by an average of two degrees. On the other hand, lower ranked ovens did much worse. One average as much as 60 degrees lower than the target temperature. It took up to 30% longer to fully cook most recipes. Now the type of heating element mattered. Most toaster ovens use nichrome heating elements, and that's the same blend of nickel and chromium as in those wires inside your toaster. But if you have quartz heating elements, and those heat up and cool down faster, that makes them remarkably consistent and responsive. So we got beautifully even, well-browned food. Now given enough time, most of the ovens could bake. Potatoes and pizza and cookies eventually turned out fine in all but one machine. Broiling and roasting were where we saw big problems. Some toaster ovens took almost 20 minutes to broil one batch of asparagus. And this usually takes less than half that time in a conventional oven. Now this came down to the distance between the broiler element and the top rack. Food needs to sit really close in a toaster oven to broil well. One toaster oven had only two rack positions and the highest was three and three quarters inches from the broiling element. And that's still pretty far away. It took double the time of any other oven to broil the asparagus or melt cheese onto sandwiches. On the other hand, racks that were too close were much better because we needed to be able to see the food as it broiled and models with only one and a half inches of space were really hard to keep an eye on. The best toaster ovens had a range of rack positions. Now the toughest task was roasting whole chickens. They could all hold a four pound chicken on the lowest rack, 
but a few chickens barely made it in and they got scorched. In fact, most of the chickens came out too brown on top and pale and flabby on the sides. That's a sign the heat wasn't circulating well enough in that cramped space to evenly brown the bird. The best toaster ovens were bigger and they were about 18 by 12 inches inside, so they comfortably fit the bird with room for heat to circulate and turn out chicken that was beautifully browned and crispy all over. Our top ovens also had dedicated roast settings that used both the top and bottom heating elements. Cooking performance aside, a toaster oven should be as easy to use as your regular oven. But some of these were super fussy. One even used a confusing series of symbols instead of simple words like bake or broil. So we had to look up those symbols every single time we cooked. Now, some had us tapping buttons over and over. Others were confusingly designed. One had a power button that was the same size and shape as the start button. So after getting all our settings just right, it was way too easy to press the power button and turn the whole thing off and have to start over. Totally ridiculous. We liked large, clear displays with straightforward controls. We also liked models that remembered our previous settings and let us adjust them during cooking. And we liked toaster ovens that were easy to clean with crumb trays that slid right out, with non-stick interiors that were easy to wipe down, and dark colored or non-stick accessories that didn't stain. One of the worst offenders for bad cleanup was this oven that kept leaking grease onto the counter for days after we roasted a chicken. Now after all was said and done and all that food was cooked, our top rated toaster oven was once again the Smart Oven by Breville, which cost about $250. This oven has extremely accurate temperature control, varying just two degrees from our target over a two hour period. The food we cooked was remarkably consistent. Toast was evenly browned, chicken was bronzed and crispy, cheese melted easily, and cookies were perfectly golden and chewy. Its quartz heating elements heated up and cooled down quickly. It's also a fairly large oven, so it can accommodate a 13 by nine inch metal baking dish or a small rimmed baking sheet. We appreciated its intuitive dials, non-stick interior, and black enamel pans that provided good browning, but were still really easy to clean. As a final test, we made an additional 365 pieces of toast in a row to be sure it will work for months to come, and it held up like a champ. Since our top four picks all cost about $200 or more, we also chose a Best Buy. It's the Krupp's Six Slice Convection Toaster Oven with digital controls at about $100. It's a bit smaller than the other ovens, so it can't fit a 13 by nine inch pan, but it was relatively easy to use and it produced well-browned, evenly cooked food.